Cheat on me? Okay have fun with mono for next couple of months. Story 1. Cheat on me? Okay have fun with mono for next couple of months. So background story. I was with this girl for over two years and I was infatuated by her. Utterly infatuated. It was not love it was infatuation. Everything she did would make me happy, even small things like the way she laughed or the way she walked, talked, looked, everything. Since the day I met her I knew she was the one. Boy was I wrong. So about two years into relationship we kinda got distant mostly because of my anxiety and frequent panic attacks which I tried to control but with the amount of stress from new work I just couldn't always be in control those of you who have paranoid anxiety will understand so she got distant. I knew that she didn't want to spend as much time with me as she used to because I was a mess. Meanwhile she got a job and things were looking up. She was somehow happier and she lead to talk about her new colleagues and I was genuinely happy she worked at a place where she didn't have to under constant stress like I had. Long story short boss was an asshole. I really wanted to be there for her but due to panic attacks I couldn't so I tried not to get in the way of her happiness and tried to deal with my problems by myself. After I figured out I can't do it I tried to ask her out for a dinner or something to celebrate her work and tried to talk to her about my problems this may seem as me being needy but at the time I was. I wanted something positive in my life since I was in a acid hole. At the dinner we talked and then she dropped a bombshell on me. She said she has slept with a guy from her new work. I was devastated. Mind you we were in a two year long relationship and I was walking the job I hate to save enough money to pop the question and all that s it. So I just sat there in disbelief and looked at her. She was whirling her hair. It made me hurt even more and I broke up with her then and there. But she couldn't let it go. Constant calls, messages and s it which made my anxiety skyrocket. After a couple of months she sends me a photo with her new boyfriend guy from work with a message your services are no longer required. It killed me inside so I blocked her number. Five months later I get a call from unknown number. It is her. She was all apologetic and s it and I was in mood to avenge my broken heart. Since I am quite petty person I called my friend for a drink. My friend at the time just went trough mononucleosis and I knew she was still contagious. So as a joke I told my friend we should celebrate her getting well by drinking orange juice from wine glasses. It sounded harmless so my friend accepted. When we were done celebrating I carefully washed orange juice from the bottom, didn't touch the top of the glass and placed it in a box. Next day I called my ex and suggested we should have romantic dinner together. And I went whole nine yards. Coacked my meal, lighted the candles and pour some wine in advance. One in the normal glass and one in special glass. I even cut some oranges and placed them on top of the glass so that she doesn't ask why it tastes bit orangey. So we had a nice evening and some makeup sx, and I was not afraid of mono since I had it when I was 9 or something like that. For the next month I was in a relationship with her again and all my friends asked me why was I doing this to myself if only you know. She was coughing and snorting and all that s it and I knew I hit the jackpot. So she got to the hospital and it was mono. I was there for her for three months. Taking care of her like I was the best boyfriend ever, and when she got better she was told by her doctor she will have to wait for six months or so before she could normally interact with other people. And then I decided to strike. You see you were in tough time and I was there for you and did not cheat on you or anything. Why are you going back there it was over a year ago. Because I got you mono. Got up left blocked her number and never spoke to her again. I was afraid she will try to charge me with attempted murder or something anxiety a but she never even tried to contact me. So that is the story of my petty revenge with nuclear results. Hope you bared trough it. Story 2. Update. Second cheating revenge story. This story is a little less painful than the last time but this happened around 2 years after the first breakup. I was dating this guy who was a lot more out of the closet than I was at the time. He was my best friend at the time's older brother. When I would hang out with my friend he would often keep to himself and I don't know why but something pulled me toward him. At first, it started with just chatting with him while my friends got ready to go somewhere, just enjoying being able to make him smile was enough for me but soon enough I managed to talk him into joining in when we hung out as a group. It was obvious that we were getting close and almost all of my friends were pushing for the two of us to get together, my best friend especially. 
It was around Halloween when I had asked him out and to my shock, he said yes. For the first year, I felt so alive just being around him, enjoying just being in his company whether it be going on dates or just lounging around his house and watching a movie. It was so much so that I practically lived at my best friend's house being that I still wasn't out to my parents and didn't want to have to explain me being only 17 and having a 19-year-old boyfriend to my father. It helped that the family supported us, feeling as if I was a member of the family myself. Things started changing when he built up a bit more confidence with himself and began to gain a group of his own friends. They were a bit older than him and he looked up to them so he started to change his personality as a way to impress them. It started out with small things like making slight jabs at me when they were around and eventually just any time he pleased. He started to get pushy about me telling my parents that I was gay so I wouldn't be lounging around his house all the time. It progressed to him trying his best to exclude me from hanging out in either friend group, lying about what he was doing, blowing off plans with me, or lying to my friends saying I couldn't go. I tried to brush off these actions and pretending that what was happening didn't hurt. It got to the point to where he would even get annoyed at me hanging out with my best friend at their home and completely ignoring me while he hung out with his older buddies. The only time I had heard him even speak of us being together was when he would make lewd comments regarding our S-time life. One night my best friend was having a sleepover with me and two of our other friends and like normal we stayed up until late into the morning, energized on energy drinks and soda. It was nice to hang out like old times again with my friends and they seemed to agree with me. We were halfway through a weird conversation about some show or another when my boyfriend came home. The walls were thin in the house so I could hear that he wasn't alone, and the group of us got quiet, us all being very nosy. As soon as they made it into the next room my heart sank at the unmistakable sounds of him and another guy having s time. My friends were all honestly shocked and had attempted to comfort me. At that point, I felt both sad and angry but felt that storming into the room would do nothing more than give him the satisfaction of seeing me hurt. My friends tried to help me take my mind off of it with various distractions but they could never silence the obvious sounds of my boyfriend and whoever he was with. I tried to pretend like I didn't hear it not wanting the group to have their sleepover ruined by my drama but no matter what with each sound I could hear through the walls my sadness turned into anger. Even after my friends crashed I remained wide awake in the silence of the room with the sounds still very obvious. It wasn't long before the sound stopped and I see from the crack in the door my boyfriend's buddy shirtless and disheveled making his way to the front door. Long story short I did not sleep that night and by the next morning, I was still very angry. My boyfriend was heading out of state to look at a certain college he was hoping to attend so he had to wake up pretty early. I was in the kitchen drinking some hot tea when he woke up. He shamelessly stumbled, half naked into the kitchen smelling of s time and cheap cologne to hide the scent. He was tugging on one of my old shirts that I had given him for his birthday and attempting to fix his hair like nothing had happened. Hey babe, you stayed up all night again? He asked in a groggy and familiar tone. He knew that I had a tendency not to sleep sometimes, occasionally losing track of time so he didn't assume anything. I just saw him smiling at me the way he always did and it just made me angrier, knowing he thought I hadn't caught on. Think you could fix me a cup I need to get on the road soon. I just stood up and walked around the bar into the kitchen area and pulled out the tea packets. I sat while the tea kettle boiled and had thoughts of throwing the hot liquid on him but thought against that. When it began to whistle I poured the hot water into his mug and went for the lemon juice he liked to put in his tea every morning. That was when my eyes landed on the lemon flavor laxative that sat in the fridge. I fixed his tea alright but instead of lemon juice I poured a good amount of the liquid laxative into his cup reading the instructions of course, not wanting to kill him. I also added one of those s time old stimulants that sat on the counter. It was a gag gift from his dad for his last birthday that seemingly never left its spot on the counter. I stirred it really good before returning the tea to him, watching him gulp it down. He looked at the time, noting that he had to get on the road before traffic, pulling me into a kiss. I was disgusted by this, tasting another man on his lips as he left out the front. I watched him leave, waiting a good hour before sending him a voicemail, telling him that it was over. I later told my best friend about what I had done and the two of us still share a laugh about it to this day. 
My now ex was really angry with me when he came home since he said that he had accidentally soiled himself in traffic and every time he had to make a pit stop his ejection would accidentally fall into the water. I felt bad about it but at the same time felt it is still a bit funny. My ex of course still gives me dirty looks when I come to visit, sometimes getting jealous when he hears me and my best friend talking about other guys. In the end, though I am sad that things happen the way they did but you have to learn from your experiences and grow from them.